Hey guys, how are you today? So we are here um, for a design team video. Now normally I just bring you the challenges, maybe chat about some new products. Uh, this month we had a team member who had some family emergencies so she couldn't do her swap with her fellow team member. So I, pick up, I picked up the ball and I said, no problem, I'll do it. So I've swapped some stuff with Wendy. Um, uh, on a Wendy, I think on YouTube, she's Wendy High, um, Wendy Ewing. Um, and um, I sent her some dead canvas. I'll link her video in the description below. She did a great job with it. In return, she sent me some interesting bits and pieces. These two pieces of fabric with trims and stuff on them. Wendy, this is a great idea. I do lots of like handmade sewn embellishments. I don't think I actually thought to do something like this, but this is a good idea. Um, and she sent me this big piece too. And then a piece of her own dead canvas. Um, you can see here there's a hole in it. So the first thing we're gonna do um, is stabilize the hole. Now, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to think about what I would do with these and my muse is dancing around saying, we need to make a journal. We need to make a journal. We need to make a journal. And well, what about a banner? No, we need to make a journal. So she and I have been having this argument like all weekend. Um, so I think I'm going to just relent and we're going to make a journal cover. So <laughs> anyway, that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you step by step. I'm not going to fast forward it or anything. The first thing we're going to do is stabilize this piece of dead canvas. So I'm going to get out a couple things and some glue and I'll be right back. Okay, for those of you who don't know, in my Etsy shop I have um, <clears throat> not only a lot of digital downloads, I have um, original artwork. There is a section for sort of art parts and salvage pieces I find interesting that I buy an excess amount of and then I sell the extras to you all. Um, I also have my own line of stamps and stencils and there's lots of ways you can use them besides um, just your ordinary scrapbooking and card making. If you're a mixed media artist there's lots of ways you can use them. Um, I'm gonna um, try to use them in an interesting way in this case. We'll see how interesting I get with it. I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Anyway, uh, these are, um, these here are from some digital downloads. These are embellishments that you can print out whole sheets of these in my Etsy store. And then I, usually I cut them out and just have a bucket of them sitting here on the table. So we've got those we're gonna use. I've got some tissue paper with gold dots. This is one of my favorite tissue papers, just gold dot paper. Um, these are some watercolor embellishments I did like a million years ago. We're going to use those probably. Um, these are some of my stamped images that I stamped onto mixed media paper and, or drawing paper and then I uh, watercolored. So we're going to probably add those. And then I have some of my stamped images on deli paper. Now this one I may have done, I don't remember. This one might have been done by one of my former design team members. Um, I don't think I did this, I think they did, some one of them did. I don't remember who, it might have been Cindy Utter, but it could have been anybody. If you're watching this and you did these and you sent them to me, put that in the description below, will you? Because I don't remember and I didn't mark it. Mark it. But um, the, the images on here are my rubber stamps um, from one of my stamp sets. And I have a green sheet a purple sheet and a red, yellow, orange sheet. So we are going to use these to help stabilize our piece of canvas um, and then let that dry before we do anything else. So I'm going to glue these on here um, and we're gonna keep it on this nonstick mat that way um, I won't accidentally glue something to the table. So we're gonna use some matte medium which is trying to glue itself together, so let's not do that. I'm gonna just pour a puddle of it on here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put something over this hole in the canvas. And I think I'm gonna start with the gold tissue paper. Now, because I'm working on a non-stick stick craft sheet, I should be able to do both sides of this and let it dry, and it, there should be no problem with it sticking to the craft sheet. It shouldn't stick at all. 
And then I'm gonna take, I think the purple one would go best with the pink. I like these gold. This is one of from one of my sap stamp sets. It looks like a like an orange. I like that. Rip. I don't have a plan. We're going planless. <laughs> when I do these kind of journal covers, I usually don't have a plan. Fun fact. I just do what feels right. With a lot of my art, I do that. I don't generally plan. I, I sometimes do, but not, not often. Now my idea is not to completely cover up her background. Her, it looks like a piece of an acrylic pour that maybe she wasn't completely happy with. I just want to add to it. Make sure, make sure you get all the edges down so that you get plenty of matte medium or um, gel medium, whatever kind of glue. You don't have to use a medium. That's the other thing too. You could use, um, you know, Elmer's if that's what you have. Use Elmer's. That's a thicker piece of paper, so it's not going to want to stick as easily. It's going to want to move around. Okay. Put that over. And repeat on the back side. Normally I wouldn't be so concerned with the back side. When I do these kind of journal covers, I sometimes will do stuff to the back, sometimes I won't. Uh, but in this case we have a hole here, so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna try to stabilize the hole. some of these scraps. Somebody spent time creating this paper for me, so I'm going to make sure to use it all up. I don't know how long this piece of paper, these, I should say papers, have been in my bin probably for a while. So usually when I'm creating these, I just grab a stack of things that I think I want to use and then my goal is to just use them up on the on the dead canvas. Now it's not that I don't like what Wendy did with the canvas. It was actually a beautiful color. I don't want to um, cover it all up but we're just transforming it into something new. She obviously took it off the stretcher and she, there was something about it she didn't like, but we're gonna see what, what we can create with it. Okay, so now before we do anything else, we need to let this dry completely. Um, and then uh, we're nowhere near done. <laughs> so I'm gonna let it dry. I've gotta go run some errands. For you, it'll just be a second. For me, it'll be uh, probably an hour or so and we'll be back. Okay, so it's mostly dry. The back is a little bit wet still, but I think it's gonna be okay, and we are going to continue on. Some blob of matte medium. Um, I wanna add some stenciling to the piece of fabric before we 
do anything else. The colors I'm picking are not only to coordinate with what's on here, but with the fabric that she sent me. So I chose colors that would go with that. Um, I chose mostly the Blick Matte um, Acrylic paints because I have them, number one, but also because I think the matte paints, these seem to dry a little faster than some of my other paints. So I picked, I have the matte acrylics in these five colors. And then I picked one deco art paint. This is Ultra Blue Deep, a deco art Americana paint because one of the fabric swatches and trim she sent me has this dark blue color in it. So we're gonna go with those. And I've got three of my stencils. This one is 10 dot, I believe, yep. And then, can you see that? Yeah. And then this one is primitive. Uh, yep, primitive. That's what it says on the edge. The uh, names are etched into the edge of the stencils, at least the newer ones. And this one is, oh, here we go, four square 11. So I have a series of stencils called four square where you have four different designs in a square stencil. You can use it as is, or you can, I've done with some of them, cut them apart. Um, okay, we're gonna start with 10 dot. I'm gonna put a few of the paint colors out here on this piece of um, newsprint. Just need a little bit. Don't need a ton. Let's see. I don't know if I'm going to use all of them, but I'm going to start with the pink, sort of the turquoisey color, then a pale yellow, and the dark blue. I might add some of the green. Let's do the green too. The one I'm not sure I'm going to use is the purp this purpley color. I'm not sure I'm going to use that. I pulled it out just in case, but I don't know if I'm going to use it. Okay. I have a sort of a short, stiff bristled stippling brush, and it is a, I don't know, it's called a scruffy brush. Uh, folk Art One Stroke Scruffy, it says 4152. That's all I can read without my glasses on. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to start with the 10 dot. And you know, the trick with stenciling is to um, not to have too much paint on your brush. So I'm gonna dip the paint, the brush in the paint, and then I'm gonna tap some of it off. And then I'm going to tap up and down. You could scrub if you don't care about getting a good impression and you don't mind if it's a bit messy and it, you know that it maybe goes under the stencil. But if you want a good impression and a good mark, a little bit of paint and up and down motion. Sometimes I still get the bristles under under the stencil because I still have too much paint on it or I push too hard, but you know, usually you're gonna get a nice impression if you do it that way. Let's see. And again, I'm doing this in real time. We're not gonna fast forward. So this is gonna be a bit of a longer video. Hopefully that's okay with you. <laughs> okay, so that's one. I've added a nice a range of color to that. I used up all the yellow that was on there, which is perfect. I'm, gonna just, I'm not gonna be super crazy about cleaning the brush. I'm just gonna sort of dry it off. And then we're gonna go in with this one, which I could use the four square, but I'm not sure, I just wanna do one at a time. So um, we're gonna go in with the turquoise color. Okay. 
need some more of that color. That color is not going as far as the other one. Okay. right in the middle. Okay. So you can see already lots of interesting marks. Okay, so now we're going to go with the four square. And I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to start with the pink, I think. It's turning a little purple because I didn't wash my brush, but I'm okay with that. brush off again and turn the stencil I think this way go with the green And then one more time, and we're going to go with the blue. See if I can get my brush a little bit cleaner. So there's no right or wrong way. Just keep layering marks and stencils on your little piece of canvas or um, scrap of fabric or old pair of blue jeans or you could do this on anything you don't have to have an old piece of paint, paint canvas um, so we're gonna let that dry and I'm gonna check the back and make sure I didn't mess up the back since it was still wet and if I did I'll probably put some um, like pattern tissue or plain white tissue or something on the back uh, but I'll do that and I'll let everything dry and I'll be back okay so this is a little bit cold, which means it's still like oh, probably a little bit damp, but it's dry to the touch. So now the next thing is to make this into a journal cover. Now, we did uh, put some papers and things over where the tears were to, you know, reinforce and strengthen the hole here. Um, but that being said, we only did it to strengthen it. I do like the sort of frayed you know, holy edges. So I don't know that I necessarily want to cover them up completely, at least at the moment. Um, and I don't like huge journals. I like small ones. And here's one that I did. No, not that one. Somebody else did that one. Here's, <laughs> here's one that I've done out of actually dead canvas, um, like the one that we're doing today and it'll end up being about the same size and this this was the background was a piece of old canvas of mine that I didn't like I did the same thing to it that we're doing today um, so okay I've pulled I still have her fabric that I want to attach I've pulled a few things from my small bits bank um, the, I have these colored safety pins which are a lot of fun um, I pulled a blue one a pink one and a green one I have these pieces of sort of halfway art embellishments um, that I've done and these are just layers of things I have in my stash, um, alcohol ink and Sharpie colored plastic with magazine pages and words, a piece of alcohol inked canvas, um, a print of um, one of my art pieces you can get from the Etsy shop. This is one of my rubber stamps 
stamped with Sharpie ink on a uh, shrinky dink, shrink plastic, and then shrunk down and then made into this piece that's on here. This is another one of my stamps that's on a piece of plastic packaging and then shrunk down. And it got kind of curly around the edge, but I just thought that was interesting. And again, this is magazine pages, a print of a piece of artwork, um, some words, some alcohol inked plastic, um, a painty paper, a clip. Um, so I have, you know, these are the kind of things, they're not completed artworks in my opinion, but they're good to have around. And I like to use my stamps and stencils in them in a new different ways. And then I have them to sort of add to the cover of a journal like this. And I might use this one just because it's a little bit smaller and we won't completely lose all that stuff we've done in the background. I also have these pieces of polymer clay. These are done Patty Tolly Parish style. If you don't know who she is, I'll link her channel in the description below. It's thin polymer clay rolled out in a sheet. Then I stamped it with some of my rubber stamps and then I cut it into tile shapes and baked it. And then I took some metallic paints and rubs and just dry brushed it across the top to make the pattern stand out. And then this is a popsicle stick or craft stick. Um, depending on what generation you are, <laughs> um, that I uh, I would do a whole bunch of these together, paint them, and then stamp them with some of my stamps. And then when you pull them apart, you get a craft stick that looks like this. It's really cool. So we have all those little bits and pieces to play with, not to mention the fabric Wendy sent. So I'm thinking this fabric... would be great to kind of finish up the edges on here. And I know I said I kind of didn't want to lose this, but I'm thinking we have to lose some of it. I don't know, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna, I want to get all of these colors. So I don't want to use this this way because then I'm only like gonna get that strip. I really want all of these colors. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of this. I should go get my fabric scissors to do this because they're a lot sharper than these. These are covered in glue, but that's okay. And then um, you could stitch it down, but you could just staple it too. Do I want to wrap it? Or do I want to just do that? Maybe. So really it's just about layering pieces until I get something I like and then I'm going to either staple it or stitch it down. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so far we have this. So it's getting there. I only sewed this down in the center. Um, I don't know if I like it flapping like that, but let's, let's keep working on it. We're not done. I do want to attach this because I do really like the idea of this being on the cover. And I think with the lace underneath it, that way it doesn't interfere. So what we're gonna do is lay this on top. Now, if you don't have something like this, you could assemble something like this from pieces that you have around your art room um, using your stamps and um, digis. And I'm just gonna staple it. I like the sort of mixture of messy sewing and glue, paint, staples. I like the look of that. So that's all done. And I think I want to attach some of my safety pins here. Let's see if I can do that. I probably should have done that before I stapled everything together, but you know. Hindsight's always 2020, right? So I think we're going to put all of these 
safety pins on here. Really when you're doing covers like this, as far as I'm concerned, like you can't put enough stuff. Like there's not a, such a thing as too much. I guess there might be, but not for me. Okay, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna staple this little piece of lace here so it doesn't do too much flopping around. Okay, so I didn't lose this, but we did get the fabric on here. I don't know if I want to cut this off or not. I kind of like that at the bottom, but I should probably even it out. Do I want to put that on there? Maybe. I don't think these work on here, but this may be. Maybe over here. <clears throat> Let's do some signatures first. So let me get some drawing paper out and cut a few pieces of paper um, or a ready-made journal and do something about pages inside. All right, I'll be back. Okay, after doing some measuring, if I can cut my pages to be five and a half square, they should fit nicely in here. I do think I'm gonna just leave this at the bottom. I kind of like it. Um, and I've got some of my favorite drawing paper here. And so we're gonna cut it five and a half high by 11 long, and that should give us the signatures that we want. How wide is this paper? Because I don't remember. It's like 12. So, I've got my guillotine printer, uh, printer, it's not a printer, cutter here. And so we're gonna move the guide to five and a half. And we're gonna lock it in there and cut some strips that are five and a half by the width of the paper. And I think if we do, Sorry, I think I hit the camera. <laughs> I think if we do two or three like that, I don't know how many pieces of paper this is. Let's see. So this is a 70 pound drawing paper for most um, uses, uh, light paint and sketching. This is my favorite paper. It won't hold up to watercolor, um, but you can do a little bit with it. Okay, yeah, that'll be good. So then let's cut it to 11 wide. And this is an X-Acto guillotine paper trimmer. I got it from Staples a long, a while ago. Not a long, long time ago, but. Okay. It works pretty well. It's pretty accurate. Put that away now, or at least off to the side. I need my chair so my big head doesn't get in the way. All right, so then we're going to take each one of these and we're going to fold them in half. If you have a bone folder, you can use that. I do have a couple bone folders. I don't always use them. Why? I'm lazy. Um, we're gonna nest the papers inside of each other like that. So I'm gonna do this whole stack of papers and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have our cover and we've got our pages. They fit in really nicely. Now if you wanted to be really neat and trim about it, you could trim all this, you know, once you nest the papers inside of each other, um, you get um, this the inside pages need to be cut a little bit shorter so that everything's flush and even if that bothers you you need to put this on the table with a straight edge and an exacto knife and trim all that off I generally don't do that I don't it doesn't bother me um, so I leave it uh, I could do two signatures but I'm just gonna do one before we do anything else to the spine because I do think I might want to add this popsicle stick um, we're gonna sew the signatures in. So I'm gonna get some sharp pokey things and some book binding needles and thread and I'll be right back. Okay, 
So I've got a um, sharp pokey tool. I've got some thread scissors. Now these are actually uh, medical surgical scissors. They work great for embroidery and things like that. They're my favorite thread scissors. I have, have a few pairs of them. Um, so the next time, if you have to go to a medical supply store, you might think about checking these out. Um, they're not expensive, but they work fabulous. I'm gonna get a long needle. Let's see. This is my needle book, in case you didn't get that idea. <laughs> and I think we're gonna use one of like these big, huge ones. And then I have some pink baker's twine. I think we're gonna use that for our thread. And I think this one here kind of matches the colors of the paint really well that's on here, the, color, the pink color that's already on here. So we're gonna cut off, whack off a big piece of that. And let's thread our needle. Lord, I'm trying to do this without my glasses on. That's probably not a smart idea. Okay, I really can't do that without glasses, hang on. Okay, even with the glasses on, that wasn't working, so I got out my longer upholstery needle with a bigger eye on it, and that worked great. Um, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna line up my pages with where I want them in the cover. I want them to be about there. And I'm gonna just eyeball it and poke some holes. Now, if that, you know, you're the kind of person that you need precision, then this isn't the way to do it for you. You wanna measure and clip everything together to make sure you get it in the right place. Because doing it this way is gonna make you crazy. But I'm gonna just start poking holes. keeping my fingers out of the way so I don't jab myself because that would be bad. All right, now I'm gonna force the needle through, which is, this is a big needle, so I'm gonna have to push and pull, it's gonna suck. Okay, don't pull it all the way through, leave a two or three inch tail there. And then try to find where that hole is. go. Go in the to hole at the top. Pull it out. Ugh. There we go. Go in the hole at the bottom. And out the cover. Ugh. There we go and then go back up in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna put this underneath that center string. So we have one tail on one side and one on the other side. I'm gonna pull it taut. And then I'm gonna tie it in a knot. One, two, tie. One, two. I don't know what kind of knot that's called. I don't remember now, but it's something I learned when I was knitting and it just, it holds um, stronger. I do have these right here and I still didn't use them. Jeez. So now our signature's in. That is cute. I still think I wanna put the Popsicle stick on the spine. Do I want to glue it or put holes? I think I want to put holes in it. So let me go to my drill press and let me put a couple of little holes in my popsicle stick. Hang on. And before anybody asks, yes, I have a Dremel drill press in my art room. <laughs> I love my drill. Okay. So I put two, can you see? Maybe you can see on this side. I put two holes in each end. I really want to sew it to the spine like right, like right there. So I'm gonna, how am I gonna do this? Go this, oh, I need to 
Oh, that needle's not going to fit. I'm going to have to make that other one work. Hold on. Or I have a littler one. Let's see. Let's try. Let's try this one. One with a big eye, but that's thinner. I swear I spend more time trying to thread the needle. Here we go. All right, let's see if that works. Yep. And then I'm gonna go like near where I sewed the signatures in. I'm gonna go through some of the lace and then back up the other hole. You know what? I think I want to put some beads on there, so hang on. Okay, these beads were made with some of the words printed out from my Etsy shop. I have I have files of just words that you can print on stickers. And then this is just a, a scrap of fabric and some beads and some wire. So I think we're gonna attach that to the spine, which I think will be cute. First, I'm gonna tie uh, this end in a knot. Okay, then I'm not going to cut the thread. I'm going to go in um, the hole for the bead. Okay. I just put it in the hole for the bead, wrapped it around, went under the popsicle stick, out the other side, through the hole, like I just wanted to secure it there. Did you see what I did? I'll do it again on the other side. We'll zoom in. So what I'm gonna do. Okay, we lost battery power there. So I'm not sure at the time of filming this, <laughs> I'm not stopping to look at the clip um, where we left off, but I ran the baker's twine with my needle underneath the lace here that's on the spine till I got near the other end. And then I'm going, and it's coming out one side of the popsicle stick. I'm gonna grab the bead through the wire loop on the other end. Then I'm gonna run the baker's twine back underneath the popsicle stick. If I can feel it, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lace, if I can, we'll see. I think I can, there we go. And then I'm going to, before I pull it too tight, I'm gonna go back into either the baker's twine loop or the wire loop and with the needle and pull. And that should tighten it on the popsicle stick and kind of center it so it doesn't move around too much. I'm gonna move the fabric part of the bead around so that you can see the grow, there we go. Then I'm going to go in one hole of the other end. Oops. I'm gonna just secure the end of the popsicle stick to the spine and the lace. There we go. And out the other hole. It's pretty taut, so it's a little challenging. I'm gonna have to use the uh, needle to help me tie a knot because it's gonna be tight here, which is fine. So I'll do that, it's tied nice and tight. Make another loop, put the needle through. I'm gonna do this um, one more time. You could put a little bit of glue on the knots if you're worried about them coming out. And then we will cut it. I'm not gonna cut it all the way. I don't mind a little piece of the string hanging out there like that. That is cute. That is a bunch of cuteness. All right, so then just use some tacky glue on those knots. Just a little bit. If you have fabric tack, that'll work. I don't have any right now, I'm out. But tacky glue works. And there you have it. So this go, just goes to show with scraps that you think 
are garbage. Um, things that you would probably normally throw away. Unrelated random bits and pieces. You can make this cute little journal that you can keep and work in. You can share with a friend. Um, you can use your rubber stamps on it, your stencils on it in new, different, and unique ways and make something really, truly fabulous. Um, I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do and how you can maybe salvage some of that art that you have that you've made that you're not crazy about. For instance, this little piece of paper that's in the back here, you can just see a peek of it. The finished piece was kind of ugly, to be honest with you, but the little peek of it is real pretty. Um, I love this. So, and not that her original piece was ugly, because it wasn't, it was pretty, um, but I love the way it turned out. And her, her, I do have a few little pieces of her fabric left, so those will be saved to use on paper clips or something. <laughs> um, anyway, this was a fun challenge. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, please go check out Wendy's video. And if you want to see what the other design team members got up to, not only this month, but in months past, you can go to the design team's blog page, and there you'll find each one of their names and uh, links for different uh, little buttons for each month. If the button is clickable, that means there's a video attached to it. You can click on it and it should take you for the, to their video for that month. Um, I hope you um, go show them some love and see what they've done. They've done some great jobs on some great jobs. That's great English. They've done a uh, great job on their products and um, art that they've produced. Uh, I have new things coming out all the time, including some stickers that I'm currently working on. And um, yeah, it's going to be a fun um, holiday season, I think, and a fun rest of the year. And we're already planning 2020, so I look forward to it. If you would like to get any of the stamps or stencils um, that were um, shown in this or any of my videos or the design team's videos, use the link in the description below. There's a 15% 15, 15 discount code in the description below. Please use that. And as far as I'm aware, at the time of filming this, um, if you spend at least $35 in the Etsy shop, you get free shipping. So check it out. And uh, yeah, I hope that you um, have a great day, that you like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. Um, check out my Linktree list of links if you wanna know where to follow me on social media or how to support the free content here on Facebook and over in the Facebook art groups by joining Patreon or shopping in the Etsy store or any of that stuff. Click on the Linktree list of links, which is in the description below. Go out and have a great day, everybody. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.